So the title of this video is Barack Obama's warning to mixed race people. He's going to warn you guys, you mixed race people. He's going to warn you. He's going to warn you to not think so much about yourself. You got to think about other people and how to serve others, right? Let's get into this fair use. So we can see right there, we saw it said 2005. So that's like what, almost 20 years ago, guys, let's say 19 years ago. So this uh, tape is pretty old, to be honest. Continuing on, fair use. Well, you know, I, I don't think that you can consider the issue of mixed race outside of the issue of race. And you guys saw the placard on his wall with his state, Illinois. So this is obviously when he was still barely a senator, rising to the ascension of the level of the national kind of level. So, yeah, continuing on. Um, and I do think that racial uh, relations have improved somewhat. And I think to the extent that people with mixed race are part of those larger movements and those larger concerns, then I think they can serve a, a useful bridge uh, between cultures. Now, this is something that I saw, like I said, a while ago. I want to talk about it. Uh, I've been wanting to talk about it for a while, but I'm talking about it now. I heard him say this, and I think even within the thumbnail, I put, you can serve as a useful bridge. And I heard that, and I'm like, I've heard a lot of other mulatto people mention this, this idea where you, your existence, you're here to serve, to help bridge the gap. They use the term bridge. You're here to connect people, which I mean, to everybody, that should be everybody's purpose. But for you, the mulatto, <laughs> they put you in a unique position, right? Right. This biraciality, biracial, this group and that group, you got to put the bridge, the groups together. And there's people who take that on like as a social justice warrior, like, oh, yeah, it's an honor. It's prideful. Yeah, I can accomplish something, right? They want to help lift everyone else above themselves. And to me, I'm sitting here like, well, I'm like a whole individual. I'm one person. I'm not split between the two. I'm the fusion of European, African here in America. And I'm just existing as an individual and in some cases as a collective with other mulattoes. Like, I'm... I'm just existing here. I'm not here to be utilized and used for other people's benefit. But we often find ourselves in that position is what the problem is that I see. Why we are a kind of unique case where we're put in a position where we have to serve other people's interests instead of our own interests, right? If we have a kind of collective interest, as a group is what we're trying to establish but with what you see out here it's uh you know it's pretty funny but it is what it is right and it's a learning process going along the way but barack obama is telling you that we can just be utilized to bridge gaps all right let's continue on with this those larger concerns then i think they can serve a, a useful bridge uh, between cultures, um, but because I think of that like a useful bridge, he's saying they can be utilized or used as a useful bridge. He's saying mixed race people can be used. I'm like, do you guys not see here the implications of this? The language is important. The semantics. This is critically important. I'm analyzing this as a quote unquote mixed race person. Now, the thing is with the whole mixed race people, like I already stated with MLS or Golden or all this other goofy shit, it's all basically just black adjacent. So by default, you're going to serve blacks, right? And in their intersectional hierarchy, you're going to be at the bottom doing all the heavy lifting, serving while the other, the darker skin, the the more, you know, lesbian or homosexual ones, they're going to be have the power on top, right? And a lot of, you know, uh, mulatto people, unfortunately, sadly, find that to be a good position to be in, to serve those other groups, right? For their little fake acceptance. But I don't like the, like I said, the language I hear 
you know, with this guy where he's talking about they can be used as a bridge. Used, really? I can be used by who? By what? What entity? I'm like, that's not appealing language to me to be fucking used. Okay. How about I use you? I'm going to use these other groups, you know? But with you, the mulatto, like I said, this whole tribal kind of, uh, you know, um, reality. Where is your tribe, right? You have people like this at the highest level of politics in the country, in the world, going to tell you, you can be used. You can be used, really. Do you like that? I don't like that. Let me continue on fair use. Um, what I, I'm always cautious about is um, persons of mixed race um, focusing so narrowly on their own unique experiences. And I wanted to say that as well. You heard him. He said what he's always cautious about is people of mixed race heritage focusing so much on their own unique experiences. Do you think he says that to someone who's of Hebrew or Jewish background? Do you think he says that to someone who's of Mexican descent, a Chicano in California? Do you think he says that to some homosexual, some LGBT person about their own unique experience? But he tells that to you, the mixed race individual, right? The person of dual heritage, the mulatto, as I say, he says that to you. That, oh, I always try to, you know, I warn them of being too focused on their own narrow existence. You see, a lot of these people, even your own. OK, unfortunately, don't look at you as you're your own person. You're your own entity, your own group, your own being. They literally look at you as to serve. And I go on TikTok. It's insane. It's worse than YouTube as far as all the biracial LGBT pro black woman people I see over there who literally look at other biracial people that they're here to serve pro blacks and pro LGBT black women. It's insane the type of people you see out here where that's literally their kind of operating system, their modus operandi. They look at you as someone that you got to use your quote unquote light skin privilege. You got to use, you know, your whole being is to serve other people's interests and for their liking. Like I always say, me personally, I say like, look, because they want you to basically, you know, uh, throw away the mulatto plight or they want you to downplay the mulatto plight and they want to adhere to monoracial black sensibilities but in many cases especially with kind of obama types we see it's more so kind of lgbt liberal obviously left leaning and include all these other groups okay that have nothing to do with you but unfortunately they've kind of co-opted most of this this conversation about multiculturalism or multiracial a lot of this this conversation has basically been co-opted okay we can all admit to that and understand that those of us who are straight 100 percent mulatto males we can kind of look at the scenery the environment we know yeah it's basically lgbt okay co-op all this quote unquote mixed stuff. You go on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and all this stuff. The orientation is based off uh, black women, okay? Intersectionality, which is Kimberly Crenshaw, developed around 1988, 1989, Los Angeles. It is uh, orientations towards her, black woman, okay? Lesbianism, intersectionality. And at that pyramid, they look at you as you are here to serve. You're here to use your light skin privilege. You're here to use your adjacency to whiteness to serve blacks. And they want you on that platform. And they're looking at mixed people that you got to serve that as well. We're going to get a lot more into that in the future. This is just scratching the surface. So let me continue on with this. Fair use. That they're detached from larger struggles. And I think it's, it's important. He said attached to larger struggles. Because he's talking about you, the mulatto, like, well, it's so narrow thinking, you know, I worry, I don't want you to think about your own problems, you know, it's so narrow. Think about the larger struggles, really? My own personal sovereignty, security, and well-being is not larger. My existence, like, I'm trying to say this because, it's like, there's literally people, he's just one dude. 
this was in 2006. You see right here, copyright 2006. It was like 2005. I think they they filmed it. Maybe they aired it 2006. This is a long time ago, guys, almost 20 years ago. I'm telling you right now on TikTok, you see all these biracial liberals, their little black mama or black worshiping, black woman worshiping, whatever. They're literally telling you, you got to serve these other people. You don't use the word mulatto. Say you're light skin or golden so we can include everyone else. So you don't even have a group. I mean, this is what they're telling you right now. So, I mean, it's insane. Let me continue on. Almost done here, fair use. To try to avoid um, that sense of uh, exclu exclusivity. Or and see, I relish and I embrace that level, what he just said right there, exclusivity. That is literally going to be the direction of my quote unquote brand. Okay, movement, agenda, per se. What I'm doing, I am pushing for exclusivity with what i'm doing here other people that's on them okay take it how you want it but I, I look at the value in this level of exclusivity they're trying to tell us that we shouldn't embrace that but everybody else gets the right to do that everyone else gets the right to self-preservation right except for you 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 know it's a bad thing when you do it you're here to be used and I'm trying to tell these mulattoes, a lot of you people, you're going to wake up eventually. It, it, you know, you're going to have, you're going to be forced to, you're not going to have a choice. You're going to be cornered in such a manner to where it's just inevitable. And I've already seen these trends years ago, a few years ago. I just started to get up here and speak, you know, like I said, probably a couple years ago now or a year and a half ago. Realize that there's basically no going back. You have no choice. I don't, I mean, a lot of you people still want to dance around and play games and hide hide and seek and quiet, but eventually a lot of you people, you're going to have to start speaking up because the pressure is already here. And a lot of people like him, these liberals on the left, okay, they've been, you know, trying to gear you and direct you in a position to where you're well fit, established to serve. And I'm sitting here looking at this, analyzing this, like, nah, that's not my position. I'm one of the detractors out here that's saying, nah, personal autonomy and sovereignty overall let me continue on fair use feeling that you're special in some way uh you know i, I think you may be unique in your experiences and that may allow you to reach out to more people but um you know ultimately uh, the same challenges that uh, all of you face are the same challenges that a lot of young people face which is how do you have an impact on the world that's possible yeah, he says the same challenges that you have is the same challenges that all other young people have, which I disagree. We have unique challenges, and I've already explained his wife, I should say, Michelle Obama, address him as a biracial kid with an unusual name, which to me was very good to hear because it's the assertion of the uh, biracial identity, per se, biraciality, mulatto -ness, okay? And so, uh, yeah, let's check this out. Look a certain way or act a certain way to fit in. That they have to make a lot of money or come from a certain group or class or faith in order to matter. Uh, but what we're looking at today, a portrait of a biracial kid with an unusual name. And that's what I wanted to highlight just before I move on. This was uh, one year ago today, it says, where Michelle Obama in the, like I said, the White House portrait unveiling ceremony, literally on the world stage. How many views does it have? 60K views. Interesting. C-SPAN. They have the contract with the White House and the Capitol. So it's a... 1.3 million subscribers, but nevertheless, this is a profound statement from the former first lady addressing her husband as a biracial kid with an unusual name, biracial. She didn't say black kid, right? So she's including by saying biracial Barack Obama's mother, who is a Caucasian woman from Kansas. Okay. 
So very interesting. I'm going to repeat, replay that. And let's do that. Have to look a certain way or act a certain way to fit in that they have to make a lot of money or come from a certain group or class or faith in order to matter. Uh, but what we're looking at today, a portrait of a biracial kid with an unusual name. What we're looking at today is a portrait of a biracial kid with an unusual name. And Obama, you see here, is standing right next to her. Thank you.